Last year, players like Jamar Chase, Debo Samuel, Hunter Renfro were all drafted in the middle rounds or later and finished as wide receiver ones. In this video, I'll outline six players who are all drafted in round six or much later and I think could have that type of league winning finish this season. Sleeper number six, Nico Collins. I know what you're thinking. Texans. I can't draft a Texan. There's no way a Texan can make a difference for my team. I consider Davis Mills and Pep Hamilton to be the most underrated quarterback offensive coordinator duo in the entire league. From the Texans' week 11 bye through the end of the regular season last year, Davis Mills actually led all rookie quarterbacks in passer rating at 98.6 and led all rookie quarterbacks in big-time throw percentage. He only started 11 games, had four 300-yard games. The target competition for Nico Collins is very, very weak. Brandon Cooks, we know, is good. But John Mechie, who they drafted, is coming off of an ACL tear. Chris Conley is a blocker. Brevin Jordan is just a meh. NFL tight end at running back, Marlon Mack, Damian Pierce, Rex Burkhead, nothing threatening there. Nico, the 2021 third round pick, ran a 4-4-5 at his pro day, 6'3", 215, prototypical NFL size, available so late, almost free, is Nico Collins. Sleeper number five, Kadarius Tony. No one in the entire NFL gets a better coaching and scheme upgrade than the New York Giants going from the horrific Jason Garrett type scheme to the Brian Dable spread, vertical, aggressive, pass happy scheme that made Josh Allen and the Bills wide receivers so, so, so profitable. Enter Kadarius Tony, who I believe is by far the most talented Giants pass catcher ahead of Kenny Galladay, ahead of Wendell Robinson, ahead of Sterling Shepard. Kadarius Tony, as a stone rookie, was seventh in the entire NFL last year in targets per route run at 28.9 percent can play inside can play outside explosive player no brainer in the eighth ninth tenth round on Kadarius Tony sleeper number four KJ Osborne Minnesota Vikings number three wide receivers have not performed well historically but that has a lot to do with the way Mike Zimmer and his boomer coaching staff like to play offensive football they like to establish the run they like to play with two wide receivers on the field enter Kevin O'Connell who's here in Minnesota to replace Mike Zimmer, and we have a coach who ran almost exclusive three wide receiver sets with the Los Angeles Rams. I expect him to enter a ton more three wide receiver sets for the Vikings putting KJ Osborne on the field a lot more. And as we saw last year, when KJ Osborne gets opportunities, he can play. Dude scored seven touchdowns last season. Meanwhile, Adam Thielen entering his age 32 season. He's no lock to stay productive and healthy, creating even bigger path to success for KJ Osborne. Sleeper number three, Russell Gage. Guys are allowed to get better in the NFL. Russell Gage entered the NFL as a six foot, 185 pound, six rounder, but he has turned himself in to a very, very viable and good NFL wide receiver. Note that last season, Russell Gage's PFF grade was 75.2. Mike Evans' PFF grade was 75.4. Antonio Brown is now gone. Chris Godwin might not be back until October or November, but Tom Brady is back. And maybe Rob Gronkowski won't unretire either. It's a lot of opportunity for Russell Gage in a Bucks offense, which is going to be among the league leaders in pass rate over expectation and will almost certainly be among the league leaders in red zone opportunities. Russell Gage has that Chris Godwin role plus to start the year, and he'll be viable towards the end of the year as well. Sleeper number two, Juju Smith-Schuster. It was not that long ago that Juju Smith-Schuster was the number one overall dynasty player in most people's rankings. Still just 25 years old, will turn 26 in November, now goes to the best situation of his entire career. Chiefs led the entire NFL in pass rate over expectation last year. Tyreek Hill is gone. Travis Kelsey turns 33 years old in October. Meanwhile, we have the TikTok narrative. Juju famously loves to TikTok. Jackson Mahomes, Patrick's brother, loves to TikTok. Could we see extra targets go to Juju based on the TikTok narrative? Now look, there's competition here. Sky Moore, Nicole Hardman, MVS. But man, these guys have a lot of question marks. Juju is the one who has a 97 catch season under his belt in the NFL. And sleeper number one, Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer had a really, really good rookie year. Serves as a direct backup to Keenan Allen in the slot. Was effective when Keenan was out. Serves as a direct backup to Big Mike Williams outside. Was effective when Mike Williams was out. Entering this season, we want to bet on Chargers pieces. This offense is going to be very good and very explosive once again, especially cheap Chargers pieces like Josh Palmer. Note that Keenan Allen is 30 years old and started to show some real signs of decline last year. That's one path. Mike Williams will be back to play on the outside, but what about on the other side where Jalen Guyton is? Josh Palmer should be able to overtake Jalen Guyton easily. Last year, Jalen Guyton 98th out of 99 qualified wide receivers in targets per route run. Bet on talent in Josh Palmer. Bet on talent in Justin Herbert. Let the chips fall where they may. 
at the end of the year. So there you have it. My six biggest wide receiver sleepers for the 2022 fantasy football season. For more on our favorite undervalued players this season, check out our two-part Man vs. Machine podcast.